Here is Danny and today with a review of another computer monitor, the BenQ Zowie XL2411P, which BenQ kindly sent over to me to review. It is a 1080p 144Hz TN panel that is meant for gaming. And while it is a TN panel, it does have some pretty decent viewing angles. Which is useful too, since you can tilt the screen from landscape into vertical. Great if you want it for tweets or a Twitch chat on 144Hz. And you also don't have to pay 1000 euro for a monitor stand, which is nice. And the angle for this review is that I wanted to see how it compares to my daily driver. The Asus ROG Swift PG248Q which I have been using for the past years. But the big catch here is that the BenQ one is less than 200 bucks and my personal screen launched at 600 euro and is now on a stable 400. So how do the two actually compare? A budget gaming monitor to a betting one from last year. Both panels got mostly the same specs. From the same contrast, brightness, response times. But the Asus one can be overclocked to 180Hz and has access to G-Sync. Which shouldn't have been a problem if the BenQ one at least had FreeSync, which it doesn't have sadly. But the BenQ one does have some features of its own. They tout this feature called Black Equalizer, which tries to light up the darker parts of a game. Meaning you might be able to see people you wouldn't have seen before in the shadows or in windows. I've been trying it out in Battlefield 5 and the new Call of Duty and it does actually seem to work for a bit. Darker spots are indeed a little bit brighter, while white spots get less blown up. Like what would happen if you just straight up increase the brightness in game. Which is nice. And they also have something called Color Vibrance, which I didn't really care for, unless you really want to play your games with very bright popping colors, or completely in black and white. The screens are made for esports, and it does seem to work well in games, without much issues. However, that doesn't mean that the screen is flawless. Alt tabbing in and out games can take ages, no idea why it is like that and I never really had that on my main screen. The screen goes in AFK mode and is off for like 10 seconds before it comes back on in their normal way. And it seems like the resolution scaler can do some funky things that I never had a problem with with my other screen. For example, it renders the UI of Premiere in 4K, which is the native resolution of my second screen, while the rest is all normal sized. Or Chrome is normal sized, but a big pop-up is bloody massive and I have no idea what causes it. And I haven't been able to fully fix it. But if I turn the screen off and reboot the program, it is fine again. Let's talk a little bit about the design. The bezels are normal sized for a screen, however it has a big side chin that holds all the buttons that looks a little bit off. Especially for people with OCD who likes everything equal. But talking about the buttons. The on-screen display on the BenQ is done with basic buttons and is functional at best. While the Asus one has this really satisfying thumbstick that can go up and down, left and right and be pressed as well. And I wish more screens had that. But in the end, I haven't actually brought back my Asus screen and I'm still using the BenQ Zoe one. Part of it is just straight up laziness, but also because the screen isn't drastically better or worse in terms of all day usability. The black equalizer thing also helps in games like Battlefield and Call of Duty, where the visibility can be pretty damn poor, as you might know. So that is definitely a good point over the Asus one. So yeah, if you want a fairly cheap, high refresh rate gaming screen from a big brand, this could be it. 
But that is all I got for now. Spec sheets of both monitors are in the description. This was Danny and I see you on the battlefield.